Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and you're very welcome to Dwensa Garden here on this misty Sunday morning and I'm excited to share with you what's looking good in the garden at the moment. I have a lot of colour and I have a lot of lush growth and the garden is really well quaffed in preparation for open day which is happening later on today. So well, excited to get going. Let's go and have a look around. Listen, listen very carefully. Do you hear all those birds twerping and cheeping? That's what I really love about the early mornings. Now it's a dull morning, but that's maybe good for taking photographs and, and making a video because if there's too much sun glare, it can interfere a bit. And I'm just giving you a pan up this side of the garden, the entrance to this side of the garden, before we go in there and start taking a look around, just so you can see the changes that have happened since the last garden tour. And we made two garden tours in July. One thing I do notice is that there's a definite autumn nip in the air. And if we look down here at the large laburnum tree, which is that guy there, you can see up above there's a big splodge of yellow that suddenly appeared right up in the canopy of the tree and that for me is the indication that there's no going back now we're only going in one direction and we're going towards autumn i guess the biggest thing to note now is that the dahlias are actually in flower or coming into flower and these definitely add a lot of color to the garden at this stage in the game we have plenty here in the front border, open and coming, as we can see from the buds. But I guess we're going to do a daily, daily spot as we walk around the garden and see what else we can come across. Now, just to shake things up a bit, we won't enter the garden that way through this particular arch, inviting though it might look. We'll take a little jaunt over here and go in from this point of view, which I don't think we've done before. And it just brings us kind of directly to the lower part of the garden. And here on the arch, we have my climbing aconite, which is now in flower. And this is a lovely little climber. It dies back completely in winter, which is great because if you want to paint the arch that it's on, then <laughs> you don't have to do the plant any damage and it gets going, it flowers late in the season which you can see now because like we're um, 25th of August today and it's in flower and hasn't been for terribly long but a great great addition to the garden and yeah and we'll start with something a bit different I guess now here we are and here we have lots of borders looking lush and green and neat and we have plenty of splodges of colour over there in the distance so I guess that's our next port of call and in we go towards the kidney shaped border which is this one here and it really does have a lot going on at the moment this acer tree here is a magnificent beauty that will acquire an amazing autumn colour just a little bit later on but um, yeah, it's looking good already. And of course, as usual, all the names of the plants I mentioned in this video are going up on the screen. So you can, well, if you want to know, you can find them there. And this enormous dahlia is just coming into flower at the moment. Now, this is an unusual one. And if you look here, you can see that the flowers are bicolored. Isn't it a pretty one? It's called War of the Roses and it's, well, one that's been grown for a long time. It's not a new introduction and it does really well outdoors, perfectly hardy for me. And what's really unusual about this plant is obviously that the white and red in the flowers, they never turn up in exactly the same pattern twice. And you can even get completely white flowers like this one here, well it's almost completely white or completely red ones. 
and that unusual setup is down to basically unstable genes. So the term that's used for this kind of plant is chimeric. And yes, it's a chimeric plant with genes that, you, well, you never know what it's going to do. It's nice though. The only drawback is that the leaves are a bit cabbagey. And I think I have too much of this daily in this particular border because the leaf structure is really taking over. So I do need to divide them and perhaps get rid of some of them. Okay, so we will go over here now and have a look at this long border. And we're just panning across from that kidney shaped border we just passed there on the far right, just to have a look. Uh, all the stuff that's going on in this border and there's a lot there are dahlias in here and It's giving up a load of color at the moment And I guess first thing to mention is that the fig tree has fruit Now this tree was grown originally just for the foliage But the bonus is that we do get figs and there you can see two green ones We've had one ripe already and eaten and it's a great big family ceremony. We take it in and we divide it in four and we yum it down because we absolutely love figs. And my daughter Ishtar is due down today and her favourite fruit in the whole world is figs. So you can bet she's going to be down here taking a look at the fig tree and taking off anything that's edible. Now it's not been an enormously good year for the dahlias but these ones, well they're not looking bad. I guess the most remarkable one here in the border is that great big orange one over there. <laughs> Look at this fella, it's an absolute brute. I'll just put my hand in here to give you an idea of the size. It's enormous and I absolutely love it to bits. But this was one that was sent to me in error. I ordered something else and ended up with this. So I have no idea what the name is. And um, yeah, but it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And lots more flowers to come and check out this gorgeous double yellow flower here. Now someone mentioned to me that of course double flowers they aren't the best for bees but you know if you plant a variety of flowers then bees have their choice. So I guess if you have a single window box and can only plant one thing then do by all means plant a single flower one that's open and the bees can access easily. But if you have a garden, then plant a variety. Now, do you see that lily sticking up there from nowhere? Very odd looking. Well, this is the last survivor of the multiple lilies that I dug up last autumn. Last autumn, I revamped this border, took everything out and replanted it. And I found, well, half a bucket of lilies, let's just say. And I gave them away. <laughs> I was actually a bit concerned about the lily beetle in the garden at that time. So I ended up giving away all of my lilies. But this fella has survived. He must have still been in the ground. And as you can see, he's, well, he's done quite well. So since I seem to have gotten on top of the lily beetle this year, I will probably be moving him to a more sensible spot because he does look a bit stupid there sticking up out of there. And before we move on I just want to point out this Achillea, my favourite Achillea. And the reason why I love it so much is because of the foliage. Look at that gorgeous silver foliage. It really looks super with the water glistening on it from the dew. And I don't like the foliage on Achilleas normally so this one is definitely the one I'm going to choose and it has these umbels, flat umbels of very very dark yellow, deep yellow. Very attractive plant and I highly recommend it. It's good in a stony kind of dry position so it does just super here. And I guess really that's the thing to bear in mind when gardening. Look out for plants that do well for you because it's no good me saying that this is a wonderful plant or that's a wonderful plant. If it doesn't grow well in your conditions, then it's just going to look miserable and it's never look, going to look good. So, yeah, we have to try a variety of things. I guess it's the story of the princess and the frog. You have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince charming. 
in this section of the garden, the plant that really steals the show at the moment is this beauty in front. Sephoria, mm, name going up on the screen, and it's really a scrambler, a low growing plant that is going to cover a vast area in your border and it really looks pretty at this time of year. Yeah, it's coming out over the grass here so it was tricky mowing. I had to lift this up while my daughter got the lawnmower right up against the edge. And just looking back now to where we just came from, and just to point out to you the Agapanthus, which is in bloom this year. Now this is a very old Agapanthus I inherited from my mother. And it flowered for me for several years and then I moved it. And it sulked, I think, for about five years. But this year it's decided it's finally going to get over its sulk and it's going to flower. So I'm really glad about that. <laughs> I guess I won't be moving Agapanthus anytime soon. And... I have some sad news to tell you at this stage in the video and it relates to my Circe's forest pansy which this is this glorious tree you see in front of you and it was looking even more glorious in the last video because what has happened since is we had a lot of wind and when I came back from a few days away a whole kind of major branch of the tree had smashed and broken off and <laughs> It was impossible to actually remove it cleanly, so we did what we can. You can see here how up here as well, it's been smashed. And now I can only hope that this tree is going to pull through. It might, but, well, fingers crossed. Right, and since we're over this way, there is one other thing that I want to show you before we leave this section of the garden. And it's actually behind me, so we'll just move the camera over here a little bit. And just draw out a little bit. And it's in this border here. Now, let's just go and stand back here. So we can get an idea of the spectacle that's in store for us. And it relates to that clump there. Look at that. It's a clump of Roscoa. Now this plant is in the Royal Purple group and I absolutely love it to bits. I love the flowers, I love, well, I love the way the flowers present with their hooded top and their big bib and their fangs. Can we go in there and see their fangs? Do you see their fangs? Definitely a Halloween moment going on there. And just standing back a bit from that clump of Roscoa, you can see that it is flanked by a variegated polygonatum. And this is a beautiful, beautiful plant that we had a look at in spring. But this is one that has glorious foliage and looks great all through the summer. Look at that. So this one doesn't need to flower to earn its keep in the border. And that's really what you want to be looking out for not things that have just one season of interest. Now, of course, we all need a few prima donnas out there, but we also need plants that are gonna earn their keep just by virtue of their foliage. So now we leave behind that border with the Roscoa and just move over here. And this is the section of the garden that we get down to from those arches we looked at first up. And just here at the back of this border, I really want to show you this gorgeous plant. Let's just stand back a bit and have a look. So it's Selenum wallachiana, a species plant that produces these glorious lacy umbels. And let's just go in and have a look at what they look like. Isn't it a fantastic show? I mean, similar to Queen Anne's lace, but don't be falling into that trap. Some people tend to think that every plant that has an umbel, which is this presentation of the flowers, is the same, and they're not. There are lots and lots of different ones. And this one has beautiful, delicate foliage, very fern-like and fluffy. 
a very good garden plant and perfectly hardy and good and I guess for late summer interest. So this is really holding its own now at this stage. And here we are at the point where we come through one of the arches looking at the Stipa Gigantia which will pass by here. Golden oak grass which has been amazing all summer long as you would expect. And this side is on its downtime. But that's okay, when you have a big garden you can afford to have sections on their downtime. Except of course it has glorious Tetrapanix Rex up above, which has super leaves that add a lot of interest. And it has this Acer Grissium tree, which is grown for its amazing peeling bark. That is going to keep on giving right into winter. And you can imagine when you come out here in winter and there's not a whole lot going on but you'll be able to really appreciate this bark by virtue of the fact that there isn't anything else vying for your attention. On the right there is Dr. Acula, our gargoyle and misanthropy. And we'll have a look at the plant beside her in a moment but what I really want to show you now is this Penicetum which is coming into its stride, into its season. And this is a perfectly hardy clump I've had for many years and in fact one of my very first YouTube videos shows me out here in this very section of the garden just kind of tidying up for winter and we can see how glorious the pen Penicetum looked way back then if, if not a bit smaller. And it, it really is glorious. Now I guess about mid-August it starts to produce its seed heads and that's when it gets interesting. Here we get a close-up of how gloriously fluffy and tactile they are and you just want to go in here and stroke them and they do feel soft too. It's a super plant that I may try and propagate because it would be good for me to have a couple more of these in the garden. And beside misanthropy we have Lobelia cardinalis which is this glorious, moisture-loving red plant with dark foliage that I planted this year. And I think in another video I talk about the whole story of climate change, which I won't bore you with again. But this is a plant that you really do need moisture to grow. And we've had a lot of rain the last couple of weeks, so it's done well this year. So I've just stood up and I'm looking to my right through that arch we just came through and just to give you a little pan of what we're at here so if I move slowly to the left you can see the canopy of Tetrapanix Rex and the Acer Grissium with its glorious bark we have Dracula down here we have my dead tree ferns that are still adding value with their trunks and over in the far distance, or the mid distance I guess, we have a lot more Tetrapanix Rex and a lot more stuff looking really quite lush and uh, leafy and jungly and that's all very good. Just briefly down here, this is the Schefflera I bought at a show earlier on in spring if anybody was interested in following that. And just here at my feet is Campanula Pritchard's variety. So this is the one that flowers very tall with blue bell-like flowers. And I cut it back after flowering. And as you can see, it rewards me with a lot of lush growth, which is a lot better to be looking at than tall floppy things that are going a bit yellow and have finished their flowering. So I, yeah, I definitely recommend cutting it back. So just across here, this is a border that we were looking at the back of where the Roscoe was. And yeah, and everything in there is looking quite green and lush, not a lot of colour going on, but um, very pleasant all the same. And just beside my head here, I have to show you this. Let's just turn around here. We have um, this Nicosiana, which has just <laughs> seeded. Now I have no idea where this plant has come from. It's a really really 
tall Nicosiana. It's a tobacco plant. And the only thing I can think of was a few years ago somebody gifted me the supposedly hardy variety of this plant which I planted just over there to my right and promptly lost so it didn't come through the winter for me and now I have this popping up so whether this is the hardy one or not I don't know it would be good if it was I mean it's in completely the wrong place it's just too um, too close to the euphorbia but maybe that has given it a bit of protection and there's another one down there look at that another seedling so I saw these popping up and I thought "Ooh, that looks interesting I won't pull that out and lo and behold that's what we got oh and there's that um, fascia I bought also in spring uh, gorgeous fingers of green gorgeous thing and now we're going to go through this other arch still all in the same location in the garden which um, has some of this wonderful New Zealand tussock grass flanking the border so this is Kinocloa rubra originally grown from seed and I think shown in my last video and it is still looking glorious a super thing perhaps less fluffy than last time so but but still looking absolutely gorgeous in the border and down here I'm just wondering what we have of interest Tetrapanix really rules the day oh yes the Amicia or Amicia over here to the left which produces these kind of bracts actually has some flowers and you can tell immediately how this is in the pea family by those very yellow pea-like flowers now I'm not mad about the flowers I think it looks handsome enough without adding a funny yellow in there the purple and the green just look really super as far as I'm concerned but okay you know things need to flower so we let it flower it's not a biggie and the only other thing I really wanted to show you down here was oh yeah this big spiky lad here and um, I think it's an eryngium anyway as usual uh, plant names going up on the screen and this is a dwarf form supposedly dwarf form of this plant which can get really big and boisterous it, it, the drawback is it's an absolute pig to kind of manicure you have to pull out the dead leaves and they prickle and I really don't like things that bite back so that is the drawback but I was encouraged to buy this on a plant hunting trip to the UK a few years back by someone who said oh it's a magnificent plant so <laughs> so I got it and it flowers for me now so this is the flower head we're looking at and I think there are several others yeah these ones here tall spire like flowers I think it's called psychic purple isn't that a really cool name it seems right that it should hang out with the gargoyles we're going to pass through this leafy place here with sarsaparilla tree on my left and a fig tree on the right this is the younger of my two oh, I have three fig trees now no I don't have the younger of my two fig trees and it is producing fruit but it's not ripe yet so that's good past some hydrangeas and this is a species hydrangea name going up on the screen very attractive thing and this border we all know the ligularia and the forcrea which is a giant tropical plant that must go into the greenhouse in winter and still refuses to give a flower spike but that's okay and just a glance at the bees lots and lots of bees in the garden this year they absolutely love the ligularia and let's just move over here now where we have the next stretch of the garden and this border here with the prairie planting is well it's still looking good we've got a nice white hydrangea there at the back and oh yes just very briefly to show something to you sorry about the background noise but the farmers are busy in their fields and this is the red hot poker that I divided last autumn and it flowered a couple
couple of weeks ago. It's now just about going over. You see how it fades from the bottom up. And they're all in flower, in fact. So there's that one. There's that one, which is just going over. And we've got that one and that one. But this one here is looking the best, I guess, right now with two flower heads. Very attractive. And up we go through this path, hesitating to notice a couple of things. So on my left hand side we have the last of the tiger lilies which have finished and gone over but we do have these ones. And this is a plant that produces bulbils on the side of the stem here. And Oops, can you see the bulbils and the leaf axles? And if you collect these, you can sow them and get more lilies. And in fact, this is where these ones came from originally. They were given to me by somebody else who had this plant in their garden. And yeah, and I'm very pleased with it. I will just throw those into the border and see if I don't weed them out now in spring. <laughs> On this side here, what we have is a... Uh, Panacetum grass, I think it's a Panacetum name going up on the screen, just coming into into feather, let's call it, into feather. And behind a, well this is my favourite hydrangea, it's a paniculata and it's called Vanifraise. And it does seem to be stretching a bit for the light at the moment, but look at those fantastic cones of flowers and I absolutely 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 adore the paniculata hydrangeas they're my favorite they do need a bit of shade and that wasn't a thing when I started the garden first so I wasn't able to plant a lot of them but now I do have shade and I'm taking full advantage with lots and lots of these beauties so that's where we've just come from and next I want to just show you this lovely white plant here that we see and this is called Anopheles. I really like this one for its kind of grey foliage and then these flowers. Now it does need a like a kind of well drained position. If you plant it in too lush a soil it will kind of flop all around the place but this one seems to be doing well here under the shade of a tree, a little bit under the shade of the tree, despite the fact that it would surely be the kind of plant that does well in full sun. But um, so far so good. And look at this little cutie here. Name going up on the screen. Isn't this an absolute dote? It's a plant I bought a few years back at a fair and I thought I'd lost, yet lo and behold this year I have a healthy little clump um, popping up. and. Look at the gorgeous yellow stars that appear at the end of the flowers. I think it's an absolute cutie. And it's unusual. And unusual plants were my thing for so many years and probably still are. In fact, for years and years I never bought anything unless I'd never heard of it before. So it was a good opportunity to learn and to try out new things and to possibly get something in the garden that other people didn't have. So that's the little cutie we were just looking at. Across here we have my tree ferns in pots uh, and this kind of tropical look area. So this is an area that has been built using hardy plants but to give a tropical effect and I think it has worked quite well and certainly from the visitors that come to the garden they seem to think it's worked quite well as well. So leaving that behind, I just want to show you one plant over here in this kind of spring, spring path type area, which is looking fabulous at the moment. And those of you who've been my, following my Month of Perennials mini-series will have seen it popping up. And it's this gorgeous Regersia. Doesn't it look absolutely amazing at the moment? It gets red autumn colour and it's just turning now and has these enormous big leaves. In fact, I think I might divide that this autumn. I could do with some of this elsewhere in the garden. And 
from the other side of the table up here, if we take a look, we can see the greenhouse border, which has a different character now at the moment. And this is one that develops its character as the season goes on. It has this very giant yellow Talikia, I think it is, in the background. Name got our Sylphie, I'm not sure. Get those two mixed up. Uh, I'll put the name up on the screen. And it's looking really quite well at the moment. We have lots of butterflies here. Butterflies and bees, which are a great thing. Here's one beautiful butterfly on the Lycanthemum. In here is the greenhouse and oh I'm bursting to tell you some news in there but I'll hold myself back because this is a garden tour and we don't want the video going on for too long. But I have a nice Agapanthus and Amaryllis on the step here just to entice visitors to come in and I hope this little shot will entice you to check out my soon coming greenhouse update video. Over here we have a magnificence of hydrangeas. The one on the right is actually a macrophylla and this is looking a bit past its best by now at this stage. But look at this. This is absolutely gorgeous and if you look at this you can understand why I adore the paniculata hydrangeas. Look at the, the flower heads on these. A beautiful clean white white that just kind of glows out from a shady area. A fantastic one. And over here we have a second one which is just coming now. Kind of a different uh, presentation but this will be more floriferous as time goes on. And also really worthy one. But that first one really still steals the show at the moment. And oh let me not forget. In the background there we have the cardiocrinum that you saw in flower this spring and look it's producing lots and lots of seed heads. Now it's a mere seven years to get this thing into flower from or nine years actually two years to germinate and seven years to get it to actually bloom so uh, it's the long old haul but well okay I guess <laughs> in a decade or so I'll have lots of them in the garden. And moving over here from the hydrangeas I want to just briefly show you two lots of Roscoa that are looking super at the moment. Now this is Roscoa purpurea var rubra formerly known as red Gurkha and you can see that the flowers really are red and it produces a nice clump with lots of flowers that come continuously. You can see that it's kind of not so floriferous at the moment. I've just deadheaded it, but there are lots more coming. So this will give me a show for a very long time. And this one here, I think, is just the porporia variety, just the common porporia. But they still make like worthy clumps, very garden worthy plants. And just behind, because this is a hardy ginger, of course, we have another ginger that has proved quite hardy. And these are just coming into flower at the moment. This is a hedicium and super scented one. Really, really nice. So, leaving behind that hedicium clump, and look at it, really quite a big clump. I'm going to have lots of flowers soon. And leaving behind the hydrangeas. I guess the next thing to note is the wedding cake tree over there and there's something interesting happening at its feet. And down here we have cyclamen in bloom. Now the foliage that you see behind the cyclamen isn't its, isn't its own foliage. It kind of sends up the flowers before it makes any leaves. It's the foliage of a viola which I bought a while ago, a dark leaf viola. 
at least part of the season and it's a bit weedy and a bit of a pain so I've kind of renegated it to just this position. I think it does quite well with the cyclamen and then if the leaves are dark then when the cyclamen come up and kind of float over the dark leaves it looks rather well. Also the tree above is of cream splodgy green splodgy leaves so the dark underneath looks good in contrast. And now we've moved over to the other side of the garden and this is a shorter side so we're nearing the end now and we see the succulent bed here right behind the gravel area and this cute little variegated agapanthus has come into flower and it's a really reliable flower. I don't have a proper name for it but look at that foliage, isn't it amazing? And quite vigorous too so I have various clumps. Now it's low growing so it's definitely a good candidate for a nice pot in a greenhouse. And over here we have, I guess we should take a look at my bank. And this is a bank of Persicaria affinis, which is a super plant for a dry stony bank. And at this time of year it really comes into its own with a lot of pink and dark red flowers all held aloft on the same plant. And it really, I don't know, ushers in the autumn very beautifully. Here we can get a close up of the plant. Now this is an easy plant, easy to propagate, easy to grow. The only thing is if it's on a dry bank, if you have a very dry summer, you may lose it or well, lose it in patches, which you can see there for a bit of a patch, but you know, you're probably not going to lose it all. So I think it's a very worthy candidate for this kind of situation. It really looks super when the sun hits it and I have this plant in several areas in the garden overall or mostly in places where I have banks. And now we're going to walk through to this last section of the garden and see where we are. Magnificent year for crinums. Look at my clump of Powellii. It's looking absolutely magnificent and lots and lots of flowers and when the sun hits them they really look magnificent. And if you're wondering how to deadhead this one then I refer you to a video I made about it because it's one that produces lots and lots of new buds from the central point and you really don't want to um, get rid of those by mistake. And the pink is kind of echoed by the persicaria there in the background, so I think it's a good combination. And of course this anemone. Now this anemone, gorgeous though it may look, is of course a bit of a thug. These are the Japanese anemones that grow well in shade and spread and spread and spread. But actually you can't do better for dry, dry shade if you have a bit of space to let this thing grow tall. Um, look, there's super things in, in autumn. And there is that border I was just looking at. Now we turn and we're going to go in here where the last section of the garden is. This tree, of course, is grown for its bark. Cerula, gorgeous peeling bark. Unlike the Acer Grissium, this is one that you're really going to enjoy and appreciate in winter when there's nothing else going on in the garden. And just swinging around here, you'll notice that the mock orange bushes have been pruned since the last video. Their height has been substantially reduced. Melianthus major looking really good at the moment. And lots of things looking mellow and slightly relaxed and slightly happy that the year is over and that they can just sit back and enjoy this final wonderful time because the light at this time of year is always very special. And as we do a final pan of this section of the garden, it remains for me to say thank you very much for watching this garden tour video of mine. 
in late August and I hope you found it interesting and I hope people will check back to the different garden tours at different times of the year because it's always nice to see what's in flower in different seasons if you're looking for a plant in flower in June for example or one in July then you know it's good to see what it will actually look like at that time of year and you'll find that information in my videos so thank you very much for watching and I guess check back soon for lots more greenhouse video coming up soon and we will do perhaps at least one more garden visit video before the end of this year. Bye for now.